Hi, I'm Noel with CreationEffects.com, and this is the tutorial for using the Movie Projector Intro template for After Effects. This template will let you create your own little movie featuring this vintage 3D projector and screen, and uh, it will feature your content on the screen with an old film effect applied to it if you want. So this is perfect if you need a quick intro to display your logo or company name for your YouTube channel or uh, just for an intro to your video. Everything is customizable, so it comes with a bunch of different options for the walls, floor, and ceiling, so you can swap out the images and change the environment. Uh, you can adjust the lighting if you want to. You can customize the old film effect. Uh, it comes with a bunch of custom effects borrowed from the Creation Film Effects template from Creation Effects. And finally, this 3D model will work with After Effects camera layers, so you can change the camera movements. And there are 25 different preset camera movements to choose from, or you can create your own, and uh, you'll be able to see the projector and screen from any angle, albeit at the cost of some very heavy render times, and I'll talk more about that later on. But if you're satisfied with the default animation, um, that's those six clips that are in the beginning of the demo video, uh, then it'll be a, a really quick process because those clips are pre-rendered. Uh, and so you can still edit the room and lighting and insert your own content on the screen, uh, but the projector and screen are pre-rendered, so it will export really fast. All right, on with the tutorial. Uh, let me show you how to open this zip file correctly that you download. There is a wrong way and right way to do this, and the wrong way um, could lead to errors in After Effects. So if you're on a Windows machine, be sure to right-click it and look for an Extract All option. Uh, and if you're on a Mac, you can just double click. And it'll take a few seconds because it's about a gigabyte in size. And that's because it includes um, those pre-rendered clips. So just open up the folder. And this is the project file that you'll open up in After Effects. Okay, and the first thing you're going to see are these instructions. And uh, there are instructions comps like this in every folder in the project panel. So be sure to read those. Um, they're just repeating what I'm telling you in the video, so we won't worry about those right now. And uh, the first thing we'll do is import our footage. So I'm going to go to File, Import, and File. And I have this clip of some classic cars that I'm going to use, so I'll bring that in. This is a an HD clip. Uh, you can use 4K if you want, um, but don't. I do have this 4K option, and don't use it. It's It'll make you cry. The render times will destroy you. Um, I thought I was doing a really good job of keeping the projector model uh, low poly, and I thought it would run fast, and I was just wrong. Because it's not fast. It's not fast in HD, and in 4K, it's just not even a realistic option. But um, it's here. And if you have the machine power and the time, then go ahead, knock yourself out. But I'm warning you. I'm just going to go with the HD option here. So if I open that up, you can see we've got four different steps here. Uh, the first step is to insert your footage. So in there, you've got this comp that's named your HD footage. I'll just drag my clip into there. And that is all you need to do for step one. So let's go to step two. Step two is where you can customize the film effect. Um, we've got two different comps in here, blank film and then this your footage with film effect. Let's look at the blank film one. Uh, the purpose of this comp is just to have something playing on your screen in, that, in the beginning of your animation when it's showing the projector from different angles and some of those shots have the screen in the background and it's going to be playing this. And it's a pretty simple comp so that it can run faster. And uh, if you want, you can put footage in at the bottom here or do whatever you want with this comp. But that's what it's for. Let's open up this Your Footage with Film Effect comp. This one has your footage, and like it says, it's got an old film effect. These effects were borrowed from the Creation Film Effects template uh, from creationeffects.com. And that template has a, a ton more effects and lots of presets. So you can check that out if that interests you. It's a really nifty template. So let's look at this comp. Uh, we have your HD footage here at the bottom and then above it we've got a number of adjustment layers and um, if we look in the folder here in the film effect elements folder 
We've got uh, some overlay effects. So we have several different mat options. Um, this is the mat. It just frames the footage and uh, you can swap that out if you want. Um, you might have to use a multiply blending mode. And then um, we've got some stock footage clips here which just overlay different textures onto your footage. So those are down here. You can see that they're trimmed just to be a couple seconds long. So you can extend those and position them however you want. Um, and then we've got multiple effects here which you can customize. If you go to the effect controls panel and select one of these, you can see there's a number of controls here which you can use to customize the effect. Uh, if you want to see it better, just isolate it and isolate your footage at the bottom and then play. So you can customize that little frame flicker with these controls here. And you're also going to see on some of these, these controls called auto on off blinking. And these will make the effect randomly turn on and off. So you've got a minimum on time, maximum on time, minimum off, maximum off. These values are in seconds. Um, so keep them pretty low and uh, then this effect will just turn on and off randomly within those boundaries that you set. Back in my Film Effect Elements folder, um, we've also got the Sound Effects folder here. So these uh, have multiple options for the projector audio and actually we don't need any audio in this comp here because the audio effects are all in the final comp in your Step 4 folder. But just so you're aware, you've got multiple options in here. And also, we'll see when we get to the Step 4 folder that uh, this comp is going to be shown on the screen starting at the moment that the camera moves in on the screen, kind of at the end. But we'll get to that. All right, let's close Step 2 and open Step 3. Ooh, this one's a fun one. Choose Environment. Um, this will let you put in different images uh, to change the background or the, the room that the projector sits in. So you can see we've got several different walls or ceilings and floors. And um, in this images folder here, you've got a bunch of different textures which you can choose. And to preview what your room is going to look like, I recommend uh, go to your step four folder. And then in the presets folder, there's this comp named camera options. And what this is, is it's a very low res simplified version of the projector and screen so that it runs really fast and it's got the room as well. So I'll keep that open and I'll open up this side walls comp. Uh, it's got this curtain in there by default. Um, we can choose something else. So let's go with uh, this. Let's go with graffiti. Just drop that in there. And let's do the floor as well. I'll put in this cracked kind of grunge texture in there. And then in my camera options, you can see it updates. And you're not limited to these images. You can use your own images, of course, and uh, they might not fit perfectly. Um, that's okay. There's an effect for that. Just select layer. Let me hide this background. Um, and then go to effect and shoot, where is it? Okay, stylize. Go to stylize and then choose the CC Reptile effect. And then you can expand your image in any direction. And if you see any um, seams, you can experiment with different blend borders. And it doesn't have to look amazing because uh, you're only going to see sections of the, that wall at a time in most cases. But still, ideally, you would get something that would tile a little better than this. I should mention uh, that all of these images were taken from pixabay.com. Uh, they're free for you to use uh, commercially or non-commercially. If you have any concerns about copyright, you may want to check out the, the Pixabay license over on their website um, or just use your own images. Okay, let's move on to step four. I'll close these comps. And I'll open up the Movie Projector Intro Comp. This is the final comp that you will end up rendering. And I'll open up this Instructions Comp. You'll see I've got this customization checklist. We're going to go through these later, uh, but before you do your final render, you're going to want to make sure you've got everything done on this list. All right, let me go over the, the layout of this comp uh, 
just to help you become more familiar with it. At the top, we've got a control layer um, with some slider controls. These are so you can customize the scene. I'll go over that in a little bit. And then we've got each of the individual shots. These are the same clips that are in that beginning animation in the demo video. So you can see um, we've got a camera movement for each clip and below it we've got the footage. So these are QuickTime PNG files with a transparent background um, so that you can see the room behind the projector. And then the camera layer above it is synced perfectly with the movement of the projector. So you always want to keep these clips together. And you can see this clip is trimmed a little bit. So if you wanted a, a few more, well, extra frames, you can do that and then extend that camera layer to match. So further down, we've got this clip, which actually has four different layers. And that's because uh, we've got the projector in the background. So at the very top, we have this the camera layer, and then we have the projector clip, and then we have the blank film clip. So this layer is positioned right in front of the screen in 3D space. And then we have the screen at the bottom. The screen and the projector are on separate layers uh, for two reasons. The first reason is so that we can put that blank film effect in between them. And the second reason is so that we can blur the screen a little bit to simulate depth of field. And you can do that through the control layer, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, further down, we have that ending shot where it moves in on the screen. So here's the camera movement, the projector. Then we have the your footage with film effect. And that fades into this layer, which is the clean version of your footage. So if you don't want it to fade into that, you can just remove that layer and then extend the film effect layer. Or you can move this over if you want to change the time of when that layer comes in. Uh, it's whatever you want. Further down, we've got these two light layers. Uh, you can control the lighting of the room using that control layer. I'll show you in a second. Uh, and then we have a, a shadow for the projector. If I zoom out, this shadow is positioned right above the floor. And uh, then we've got the screen shadow, which is positioned right in front of this front wall. You probably won't need to ever mess with those. Uh, and then further on, we've got the floor and ceiling and walls. And then lastly, we've got those audio files. Uh, something to keep in mind with these audio files, uh, you can bring in one of the other projector audio sound effects and put it in here. Um, just make sure that they loop if needed uh, so that they last for the whole duration of your animation. And um, they all start with the projector turning on right here and then they end with the projector turning off. So you'll want to trim off the beginning and end of the clip when you loop it. So you get that seamless loop of the sound effect. Okay, now let's go back to this control layer. You've got a bunch of different controls on this first one, room transform controls. I'm actually gonna go back to uh, the camera options comp um, just cause it's fast. And if I select the control layer and go in here, change the position of the room, slide it over or forward or back. You can stretch the room out in any dimension or at least the X and Z dimension. Um, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. Perhaps a better way is to just select um, one of these wall layers and then you can move it up or down to change the shape of the room um, without stretching any image. Uh, if you do that, of course, you're going to have a big gap. So to fix that, just make sure the layer is selected. And uh, in the Effect Controls panel, you can turn on the CC Repetile effect. And then you can expand that layer in any direction. Um, so you'd want to do that on each side and, and then with these other layers as well to close those gaps. Obviously, you wouldn't want to do that in this comp, though. You'd, you'd want to do that in the final comp. Okay, back on the control layer, um, we've got these lighting controls. Um, for this, I'm going to go back to the main comp. So if I select that layer and hit the U key, you can see we've got a bunch of keyframes on these lighting controls. I'll zoom in a bit. Um, so... This first lighting control affects the point light, which is this layer down here. And that affects the overall brightness of the room. Um, I have it so that the room is dim at first, and then when the projector turns on at the three-second mark, the room brightens, and it actually flickers 
So it brightens and then dims every two frames. And it does that in sync with a projector lamp, which if you go frame by frame, you'll be able to see that this, this light coming out of the projector also dims and brightens every two frames. And then that next lighting control, the shadow brightness, the corners of the room are going to be darker um, just because it's further away from the light. So you can use that control to brighten up those shadowy areas. Below the lighting controls are depth of field controls. Know that there is no real depth of field on this projector. It's always going to be 100% in focus. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't fake a little bit of depth of field just by blurring the background a little bit. And you can do that uh, with these controls here. So first you would just need to enable depth of field with the checkbox. And then you can control the blur amount. And um, there's a separate blur amount control that just affects the... Uh, the screen and the film effect that's playing on the screen. So if we go to one of these shots, like, uh, like this, the depth of field blur amount will control, if I turn that to zero, the room, the walls are now completely in focus. Um, so you can set that to whatever amount you, you like. I wouldn't overdo it. Um, keep it subtle and it'll look more realistic because this projector doesn't have any depth of field at all. Um, and then after you do that, you would want to blur the screen and film effect to match whatever blur amount that back wall has. Don't match the actual number here, just match the amount of blur that you see. And these blur amounts are going to need to be keyframed with each new shot, because each shot would probably have a slightly different amount of blur. If it's a uh, close-up like this, there's generally going to be more blur in a background. If it's a wide angle, there's going to be less blur. So you can see we've got these keyframes that change with each new shot. Um, very important to remember, especially if you're going to be changing durations of clips or moving these clips around in a different order, um, you're going to have to go and re-keyframe these. If you do end up messing with these clips at all, if you uh, delete them or move them around, just know that you can always go back to the original settings. Um, if you go to this Clips with Cameras comp, you can see it's got all the same clips and their, uh, and their camera movements. So you can just copy and paste those layers back into your final comp. Okay, next I'm going to talk more about this Camera Options comp. I used this to show you uh, the, the walls and the room um, because it's fast. Uh, really, the, the purpose of this comp is so that you can test out different camera movements. So if you don't want to use any of these pre-rendered clips, or maybe you just want to use some of them, um, and then you want some other camera angle in there, just go to the camera options comp, and there are lots of different camera movements that you can choose from here. Just unhide any of these layers, and then you can scrub through to see what the camera movement looks like. And there's a number of things you can do uh, to edit these movements. You can see if I select a layer and hit the U key, um, you can see we've got 10 seconds of keyframes here. These camera movements were actually created in Cinema 4D and then imported into After Effects. That's why they look like this. This is a whole camera movement and you can use all of it or just a part of it if you want. So if you just want this part right here, just shorten the clip. If you want it to go faster or slower, select all of those keyframes and then you can hold down the Alt or Option key and then click on that last keyframe and drag it inward or outward to stretch it out. So if I went like this, I can uh, move those keyframes over here and we've got a much faster version of that same camera movement. I'll undo all of that. And also, these camera movements always start by easing into their movement and then they end by easing out of it. So if you want, you can just extend this clip on either side and the camera will just be in a static resting position and it'll ease into that movement. Another thing you can do, uh, if, if you want to see more or less of the projector, um, just open up the camera options on that layer and you can change the zoom amount so I can zoom out a bit and see more of that projector. Um, another option is to just select the position keyframes, select all of them, and make sure that your playhead is over one of those keyframes. And I know to move away from the camera, it would be the Z position right here. So with all of them selected, I can adjust that. 
Okay, so I moved closer and now I can move over. But anyway, it moves all of those keyframes in that same direction, the same amount. So uh, how I intended for you guys to use this comp is to just edit together your own sequence of camera movements in this comp, and then when it's ready, you can copy and paste them into the other comp. So let me, uh, I'll just show you that process really quick. Let's go with this lens crane down shot, reel to lens shot, and we'll end with the screen reveal behind projector. So make sure those layers are on, and then you can edit a section from each or use the whole clip. All right, so I've got uh, my sequence of camera movements and I'm happy with it. So I can select those layers and copy them, open up my main comp and paste them in there. Now, instead of these pre-rendered clips that I have in here, we're going to need to replace them with the original 3D models. Um, so if you go into the C4D files folder, you can see we've got a bunch of these C4D files. So that's Cinema 4D. That's the 3D software that I use to model the projector and screen. Um, Cinema 4D comes with After Effects. Uh, so if you have After Effects Creative Cloud, you have a light version of Cinema 4D. These were actually created with uh, the broadcast version. And actually, I if you have the light version, I recommend uh, you don't even open these uh, just because I think you're going to get some messages saying that certain elements or features are missing. And I don't want you to save over the file and screw everything up. That's probably good news for you. You probably don't want to mess with Cinema 4D, and you don't have to. So let me just explain what the, each of these are. We've got the projector low res uh, file here. That's the one in the camera options comp that runs much faster. And then we have uh, two versions of the projector here and two versions of the screen. There's the physical renderer and the standard renderer versions. The physical renderer is the highest quality and it's also going to be excruciatingly slow, as I mentioned. I think the standard renderer is fine for this. The only difference um, you might notice is, is some twinkling pixels um, that kind of look like light reflecting off of certain parts of the model, and especially on the screen, um, if you use the standard renderer. And the physical renderer doesn't have that, but I don't think it's worth it. I would just go with a standard renderer. You can actually add a remove grain effect to the screen if you want. Um, just leave it at its default settings and that'll take care of some of that twinkling pixels, um, which looks like grain or noise. As for the actual render time, I was averaging about 25 minutes of render time per second of animation um, using the standard renderer. That's on my iMac, which is top of the line in 2019. So yours might be a little bit more, or it might be less, but just plan on rendering overnight or over the weekend. So I'm going to bring in the projector standard renderer.c4d file into my comp. And also, since one of my camera angles shows the projector in the background, I'm going to want to bring the screen standard renderer.c4d file in there as well. And this is a mess, so I'm going to just isolate these layers. Now there's a couple things you're going to have to remember to do whenever you bring a C4D file into your comp. First of all, you'll change the camera setting. So if you select a C4D layer and then look in the Cineware effect, this is the plugin that lets uh, your 3D model work with an After Effects camera layer. Uh, and then you'll see this camera setting here, which by default will be set to Cinema 4D camera. Just change that to Comp Camera. So let me do that with this projector as well. Set that to Comp Camera. The renderer, that's the other important thing you need to know about for C4D layers. Uh, the standard final option here is the highest quality. It's what you'll need to set it to when you render your final animation. All of these other ones are lower quality and you can experiment with them and just see whatever works best for you. Um, I like it on standard draft. It's pretty fast, but it also shows you the textures and just gives you a good idea of what it's going to look like. Now another thing that we need to do, uh, since we brought in a screen C4D layer, we're going to want to copy and paste the camera lens blur effect from one of these older screen layers. So you can see if you select one of those pre-rendered screen layers, there's this camera lens blur effect. Just copy that and paste it into the screen.c4d layer, and that will let you blur that screen. So now that I've done that, I can delete all of these pre-rendered clips. 
Um, and you'll notice I didn't delete this last clip. Oh, it's showing um, 3D model. Let's trim that. So I just trimmed the screen and the projector. So now we're looking at the pre-rendered clip that we had originally. So you'll remember this shot. It's, it moves in on the screen. It's the only camera option um, I've included that really goes in way close on the screen. And it, it lets you fade in the clean version of your footage and everything was, is perfectly lined up. So I think this shot is pretty cool. I think probably most people want to keep this in their animation. So I'll just select all those layers and slide them over so there's no gap in our cameras. Let me zoom out so you can see what we have. I'm going to move these below our control layer. So now we have an edit which I think will look right. So now let's go to our instructions comp and we'll go down that checklist really fast and make sure that we did everything we need to do. Are all the camera layers turned on? Yes. Number two, did you copy the camera lens blur effect from the old screen layer to the new screen layer? We did that. Um, are the four layers, projector, screen, blank frames, and your footage with film effect all trimmed to be as short as possible and positioned in the timeline so that After Effects will only have to process them when they are visible in the frame. So uh, a thing to know about After Effects is it will process layers even if they aren't visible in your frame. What that means for us is especially with these C4D layers, if we don't see the screen in the shot, then the layer shouldn't be there. So what we'd want to do is trim it. Make sure that this clip is no longer than it needs to be. So it only exists underneath this camera layer. And the projector layer, we already trimmed it. And I think everything else is good. So let's go back here. Is camera set to comp camera in the Cineware effects? And I think we already did that, but let's make double sure. Comp camera. And yes. Is the Your HD footage layer synced with the Your footage with film effect layer? And does it fade in at the correct time? Um, I already did that. Let's move on. Is depth of field enabled on the control layer? And are the controls keyframed to change with each new camera angle? So if I reveal the keyframes on this control layer by hitting the U key, these keyframes were made for the original clips that we had in here. Um, so they no longer work with these new shots that we have. So we would want to go through and adjust these blur amounts so that they change with each new camera angle. And uh, I already explained that. I don't think I need to show you how to do that. Uh, let's go back to instructions. Um, audio, make sure the audio starts when the projector turns on and continues to the end. So these sound effects are all set. They last for the duration of this comp, which is one minute. Did you set your render area, AKA in and out points? So the render area is this thing here. This is just basic After Effects stuff. You can go to where you want your animation to end and hit the end key. And uh, that way you're sure to just render that area and not the whole comp, which could take a really long time. Did you preview the entire animation with renderer set to a low quality? So on these C4D layers, I already set the renderer to a lower quality. And uh, you may also want to change your preview resolution to something like half or a third or something that's not full. And then just render the whole thing because there's so many things uh, that could go wrong, so many steps that you got to remember. It's really easy to forget something. So you just want to preview it all before you spend all that time rendering. If your system can't preview the whole thing at once, just do it in chunks. Preview this part and then preview this part and just make sure everything looks good. And lastly, set the renderer back to final, standard final. That's very important. So go back to your C4D files and make sure to check every one of them and set this to standard final. And uh, then just go to composition and you can either add it to the render queue or add to Adobe Media Encoder and render it out. And um, I think that's everything. Oh, and looking at my notes, um, comments, You'll probably see these, but if you want more information about a layer, just open up this column here and open up the layer and you can read some more details about how that layer works. Okay, I think that's it. Enjoy the effect. Um, sorry about the render times, but 
you're in 3D territory now, and that's that's just how it works. So, so thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next template.